I tried to make myself as tough to kill as possible for going through the Legendary Witch Queen campaign, and I think I succeeded pretty well. With this build, I was able to draw a lot of enemy attention away from my allies, and those times when my allies went down, I was able to get the resurrection without too much issue. Nothing is wasted in this build, and every part of it helps to keep the user alive. And so without further ado, here is my build for maximum survivability. Kicking things off with the weapons is peace of mind. This is a rapid fire pulse rifle in the kinetic slot and is craftable. Honestly, this weapon is so good that you can put any combination of perks on it and it'll do just fine. The key takeaway, however, is the origin trait land tank. Final blows of this weapon grant increased resilience and additional damage resistance from combatants. According to light.gg, the actual numbers are plus 10 resilience and 5% damage resistance for 5 second duration, stacking up to 3 times. So at maximum stacks, you can get plus 30 resilience and 15% damage resistance. Then for the energy slot, I used the Enigma Glaive that you craft early on in the Witch Queen campaign. This weapon is a ton of fun, I absolutely love it. The frontal shield it produces is stupidly good. I have two enhanced perks on there, enhanced tilts at windmills and enhanced unstoppable force. Enhanced tilts at windmills states that blocking damage with your shield increases movement speed for an improved duration while shielding. Then enhanced unstoppable force gives bonus projectile damage for an improved duration after blocking damage with the shield. And the shield on this thing, I can't really find the numbers for it, but it does an insane amount of protection. I have tanked supers before in Gambit. It is just so good. I cannot say enough good things about the glaives. I love them. Anywho. As you have likely guessed, I'm using the Air Apparent Exotic Machine Gun, that when fully spooled up and at full health, will give you an Arc Shield. And oh my goodness, this weapon absolutely carried my friends and I through the Legendary Campaign. Air Apparent and the Titan Bubble are the only two things that we could find that bosses could not destroy in one hit, especially if you have the Catalyst that improves the Arc Shield durability. Now what's nice about the Arc Shield is that there's about a half second grace period where it'll stay active after you stop spinning the gun, which is about the same amount of time that it takes to activate a Titan Barricade. Now for the subclass, I use the best subclass that there is in the entire game for keeping your allies safe, Ward of Dawn. It is absolutely amazing with all of the changes that came to Void with the Witch Queen expansion, and it is a ton of fun to use, especially with its fast charge time now. For the aspects, I used Offensive Bulwark to get the extended overshield for melee final blows, and faster grenade recharge rate when I have an overshield. And Bastion is the other aspect, which gives an overshield to you and nearby allies when casting your super, plus it gives a slowly recharging overshield when you and allies are standing behind your barricade. Fragments I used are Echo of Leeching, Persistence, and Reprisal. Leeching starts health regeneration for you and nearby allies after getting a melee final blow, Persistence extends the duration of overshields that apply to you, and Reprisal gives super energy when getting kills while surrounded. And finally for the subclass, I use the Rally Barricade, because having to reload the Glaive and Air Apparent takes forever without any mods. But Rally Barricade speed the animation up by a ton, so I used it, and then I also used Suppressor Grenades because I just really like suppressing the uh, Lucent Hive because it's hilarious. Now for everyone's favorite subject, armor mods. I'm going to do them out of the order that I normally do it because I think it'll flow a little bit smoother because everything revolves around creating elemental wells. The first of which is elemental armaments, which have an escalating chance to spawn elemental wells from the glaive shot because the glaive has the same element as the subclass. And the other mod is elemental ordnance. Getting a kill with a grenade will spawn an elemental well matching your subclass energy type. Then to make use of the elemental wells and more opportunities to survive is the elemental tenacity which states, Picking up elemental wells reduces the damage you take from combatants for a short duration. So taking this concept even further, I put on elemental charge which gives a charge of light every time you pick up an elemental well, or two charges of light if the elemental well matches your subclass energy type. And, as you've probably guessed, in order to make use of these charges of light, I put on the Protective Light mod, which gives a significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. Since the Void Elemental Wells will give me two charges of light, I'll get 50% damage resistance for a grand total of 10 seconds. The exotic armor I'm using is from the Master of Titan Bubbles himself, the Helmos 814. 
This will blind any enemies that enter your bubble, and any allies that leave your bubble will get a Void Overshield. Now, a lot of the rest of the armor mods are seasonal, but if they ever come back into rotation, they are absolutely amazing for this. Psionic Forging 2 increases the duration of land tank. Thermoshock Plating reduces both solar and arc damage from combatants, as well as sniper damage resistance, which does stack with Thermoshock Plating. So if you have a solar or arc sniper that hits you, you will automatically be taking 50% less damage from them. Now just throw all of these ingredients together, bake for 45 minutes in difficult PvE content, and you'll have yourself a very tough and hard to eat titan. But thank you for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.